Hello there and thank you for keeping us company. This is Why in the Morning. My name is Driver Hillary. Time for politics now. What is happening around matters, corruption, or scales of justice, if you like. I'm speaking to Anita Kirote, political analyst and uh, governance consultant, and Christine Kendi, uh, political analyst as well. Let's get to know uh, a few things that are happening and uh, what do they mean, especially uh, when it comes to matters uh, jurisdiction or the jury, what happened to uh, Honorable uh, Waluke and the businesswoman uh, Grace Wakungu. We would like to hear your comments. Send us your comments to all our social media platforms at Y254 channel on Twitter, Y254 channel on Facebook and Instagram. Join the conversation. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Happy to have you here. Thank you for having us. I want to begin with you, Anita, before everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was the last interview we had here before COVID-19. I remember like a week later, we had an, a discussion on the Kenyans' preparedness to crisis yes. and disaster. And I remember I asked you, are we ready for COVID-19 pandemic? Mm -hmm. And I remember you said yes. Now, it's 100 days plus since uh, the first case of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Do you think we have handled the COVID-19 pandemic as you alluded we are ready? Yes, we've handled it flawlessly, if I would say. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, um, as I, uh, if we compare with other African states, you can look, if you, if you look at your data, even uh, Burundi's first lady mm -hmm. was here and uh, a few days later her husband died so and and other we've been receiving other dignitaries mm -hmm. and uh, hospitalizing them which means kenya has demonstrated that it can have one of the best healthcare systems of course we are not yet there mm -hmm. and it is still a pro reach approach with the universal healthcare mm -hmm. But uh, for me, I feel like Kenya is on the right track. We've is that we started with uh, 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 curfews, lockdown. We've mm -hmm. now increased uh, the timing, and if you walk down CBD, people are doing business. So, for me, as we wait for the presidential directive, I think Kenya is on the right track. I want to challenge you on one thing: uh, the opening or the reopening of the counties or the lockdown areas will depend with the readiness of the counties. The counties were not ready. And if they were on the 6th of uh, May, uh, the president would have opened. But Alisema, uh, counties have a They need to have 300 beds. Uh, we are hoping he will be addressing the nation maybe next week. Mm -hmm. Do you think the counties are now ready? Um, it depends. Some of the counties are ready, but some of the counties are uh, not ready. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I'll take a look at uh, the Rakanithi County. I don't think uh, the county is ready, mm -hmm. but it has it has yet to receive any threat because it does not have a lot of inflows. Mm -hmm. But uh, some counties, especially if you look at the neighbors, for example, a country a county like Nairobi. Uh, which is surrounded by the likes of uh, Kajiado, Kiambu, where most of the population of the country is. And then when you look at Mombasa, Kwale, Kilifi, uh, those ca counties had no options, especially Nairobi and Mombasa, Kwale, Kilifi, with the threat of the deputy governor, had no options but to be extremely prepared. But now it doesn't mean that the other neighboring counties should not uh, mm -hmm. take effect. All right. Kendi, yeah. how have you been coping with the situation, COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic? I've been coping like every other Kenyan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how much have you been impacted? Uh, economically, it has, it has hit. Uh, I think it has hit everyone hard mm -hmm. economically. We are adjusting to wearing masks, working from home. Mm -hmm. But again, I would like to... The government has really done well. Mm -hmm. When you compare it to even first world countries like you, America. Mm -hmm. I mean, America has handled it like a third world country. Whereas I can say Kenya has handled it like almost like a first world country. Look at our streets. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a, everyone is, can access mm -hmm. masks at around 30 bob per, uh, per mask. Mm -hmm. We had a period where first world countries didn't even have enough masks for their hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, also, I think COVID is a wake up call the world needed. Right now, we, are, we were not working on our health systems. Mm -hmm. Right now, we really have to work on our health systems. Right. Look at the counties. The counties have received a conditional grant of $5 billion, mm -hmm. which they would not have received mm -hmm. if we didn't have COVID. Mm -hmm. Right now, counties are building their bed capacities. They are, building their, they are training their personnel. They are recruiting new personnel. So I think we have handled it well. 
And it's a hope uh, post-COVID-19, all these facilities will not be changed to something else. No, they're not supposed to be changed to the <laughs> <laughs> kiosks uh, and hotels. We are, we are <laughs> really hoping for the best because uh, mm -hmm. desperate times calls for desperate measures. So True. we've run, um, I think Kenya is a country that operates under pressure. Mm -hmm. Give me pressure and I will deliver. With no pressure, I don't deliver. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are hoping these facilities will not turn, you know, we are, I'm hoping Hillary will not take... The, the bed and put it in his bedroom. Mm -hmm. You know, we will start asking where the machines, where the ventilators. And the health workers. And health workers, mm -hmm. you know, especially, actually the issue of health workers needs to be looked into because it is, it's not only a COVID menace, it's mm -hmm. a menace that has been ongoing for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So how do we keep uh, this? Uh, we, we've employed more doctors under what terms really? Because we've not discussed the terms. Mm -hmm. We are giving them uh, money, but we've not discussed, is this permanent so yeah. because the ratio according to world health organization the ratio in kenya was uh, one doctor per a thousand oh. yet we know graduates who are doctors and are unable to find unemployment mm -hmm. so it's my understanding that government has now absorbed more doctors under which condition is it permanent and pensionable mm -hmm. is it a contractual agreement and as you've said one year later after mm. uh, we've managed COVID, are we going to be in a situation whereby we will be like, okay, now we are okay, goodbye doctors, uh, have a good life. And then, then we are asking, start striking again. Yes, and then we are looking also at accountability, um, which even CS Mutaika um, has been put on the spot. Mm -hmm. Accountability in terms of uh, money. Mm -hmm. He's been asked by parliament to appear several times and say exactly, Kama ya 40 million, what, what, <laughs> what exactly is that? Mm -hmm. So uh, apart from... The day to day, like tea, stationery. My, 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 now my query is on the machines, the the ventilators, yeah. um, th those special things that we've received. Mm -hmm. We are hoping that it will not land in some private doctor's uh, practice mm -hmm. instead of benefiting Mwananchi. So the question is now sustainability. Is what we are doing sustainable? If True. we stop receiving COVID funds, are we in a position to sustain? ourselves in terms of healthcare management. That's very true. Um, Kende, we are hoping the president will be addressing a few things in regards to COVID-19, uh, the lockdown, the counties that we are on lockdown. And uh, I've had uh, outcries from the Ministry of Health, especially from the CAS, is they have been complaining Kenyans have now gone back to their norm. They are not afraid of COVID-19. They have not. They have now stopped watching the uh, the containment measures that have been put in place. Uh, do you think now the Kenyans we are doing something good I to ourselves? I actually think the government has done its part mm -hmm. in in containing the the, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But I think we as Kenyans have a lot to do. The masks, you find people are not wearing masks. The, sunny, the, use, the use of sanitizers. Matatus are not using sanitizers they anymore. Stopped. They stopped. They stopped. The first two weeks when we were scared, we used sanitizers now. So I think the reopening of the economy will greatly depend on our behavioral change. Mm -hmm. Actually containing the virus uh, right now doesn't depend on the government, it depends on the behavior of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. If we can reopen the economy today and Kenyans are able to contain the virus, are able to follow all the measures that we have been given by the Minister of Health, mm -hmm. I think we can beat the virus. Mm -hmm. But right now I am doubting Kenyans are willing to to wear masks, to, excuse me, to have a masks policy. Mm -hmm. When you see a police officer, that's when you wear the mask. Mm -hmm. I think we are supposed to adjust to these things, adapt the new uh, the new social changes that we have, mm -hmm. keep the distance, uh, keep the social distance, wear masks, wash hands, and we can beat the virus. Mm -hmm. But as long as it ha that, as long as we have to be pushed to to maintain to observe the measures put in place by the government, mm -hmm. I don't think we shall beat it. True. And the government can only do so much. Uhuru wacha kuja kupatia sanitizer, you wash your hands. Uhuru will not come and give your mask and tell you, please wear this to protect yourself. Again, Kenyans are not, are not afraid of the virus because of our fertility rate. Mm -hmm. And most of the patients are asymptomatic. My, and so we think that this thing is, is, is not serious enough. Mm -hmm. But Hillary, you, have, you haven't contacted the, the virus. You mm -hmm. don't know how you will react to it. 
True. Maybe you're one of those people who will react, who will get, become really sick, or you're, you, you're one of the people who will become asymptomatic. So you don't want, you don't want to find out mm -hmm. where you lie. So the best thing to do right now is protect yourself. I don't, I don't think the president can overemphasize mm -hmm. the importance of personal responsibility in, in containing the virus. Mm -hmm. The government has done its part. It's time for Kenyans now. To be, to be cooperative with the government, not to be pushed to do all these things. Let us wear masks, wash our hands, sanitize, and maintain social distance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's uh, that's called cause on uh, personal responsibility, like you have mentioned. Now, Anita, the idea of having asymptomatic patients being treated from home, uh, the government has, has moved in earnest to ensure they are back home. But we have a worry, we have uh, some people who are feeling like, we won't tell this person is sick, but you're bringing them back home. How will we cater for them? It is being said the treatment and the caring of for the COVID-19 patients is expensive. We have uh, vulnerable families. What do you make of the idea? Um, for me, uh, the fundamental question I'd like to ask is, even when you're in this facility, especially when you are asymptomatic, mm -hmm. uh, what exactly goes on? Because from what I'm getting, what goes on is monitoring. Monitoring to see if you, uh, you're coughing, monitoring if you have uh, difficulties in breathing, monitoring your temperature and things of that nature. So for me, I, I go with the government's directive that let's free uh, the Kenyatta University Hospital and uh, the likes of Mbagadi and Kenyatta so that we can take care of the more critically uh, patients. Because being that Kenya is a young population, which means 80% of uh, Kenyans are asymptomatic unless you have an underlying condition. Mm -hmm. So if we free the hospital, because we, some of the pictures going around, you're seeing people are in quotes chilling, mm -hmm. like they're just staying and waiting for the two weeks. Buy more food. Yes, <laughs> and eating. And in fact, uh, uh, there's a resident of Kibera who was like, I, I'm very ready to go for this quarantine. Here mm -hmm. they're eating chicken, they're eating good food. Actually, it comes packed. Yes, there, there is uh, packs of food and everything that you want. So for me, I think the asymptomatic way is a good way to go. Mm -hmm. But the challenge uh, comes in because... Uh, I'm taking uh, home care also as self-isolation, whereby you have your own room, your minimal interaction with the family members. So if you look at uh, vulnerable uh, families, as you've mentioned, whereby maybe 10 people or 5 people are staying in one room, there is sharing of uh, toilets and bathroom, it becomes more difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, a home care solution looks more of a, a, a privileged position where somebody can actually afford to stay in their own separate room where somebody can afford the diet because the other question begs uh, are you getting the same food the chicken that is being given to those in uh, quarantine or in hospital care am i going to get that chicken at the comfort of my own home will i get like free deliveries am i at home like what exactly is the arrangement uh, are there maybe i don't know drugs I'm taking, uh, at how, how many days am I being monitored, is it daily, is it today, am I doing self-monitoring, uh, do I have my own temperature at home or are they, uh, do, do they have a schedule of exactly how are they uh, monitoring and also uh, the database, do I have restrictions because I understand when you're in hospital you have restrictions on limitations, so if I am doing uh, home care, are there restrictions like am I not getting visitors? Can I go to my local kiosk or can I go to my local pub, you know, these um, tiny, tiny everyday issues. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, home care uh, comes with uh, a kit, like a, a sort of a kit uh, to understand exactly how it's going to work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, wow, pengine utakuwa unapikua tu uji because that is the common thing. <laughs> Na kamukimo hivi. Now, uh, let's finish on these uh, COVID-19 issues. Yesterday, uh, CES Dr. Massimo Wangangi said now the cases uh, or the backstops are the governors, now the counties. Now, with the baby COVID-19 uh, being at the lapse of the counties, what do you think the counties should now be doing, especially them that have not been touched by COVID-19 and them that will be, uh, will be affected in any way? What do you think that should be uh, happening now? 
The, the counties have been given the conditional grant okay. by the national government. And the Ministry of Health was very specific. It actually gave guidelines on how the money was supposed to be spent. Mm -hmm. they, they have the number of beds, the isolation beds that they're, going to, they're supposed to have mm -hmm. against a ratio. Uh, there's a ratio for the isolation beds to ICU beds units. So counties are supposed to be able to manage it. They've even been given a further advantage where they can procure the non-pharmaceutical items mm -hmm. uh, independently from other, from other sources so that they don't have to follow to, to be slowed down by the bureaucracies in the government. Mm -hmm. So I think if the county governments, if the governors are genuine, mm -hmm. they can, they can ha actually handle the COVID-19. And that's the only reason that we have been restricted in Nairobi and in the hotspots, such because the county governments are not prepared. But as long as they are prepared, we can now move to the counties because I know if I go to my county and get sick from there, mm -hmm. my county government has the ability to take care of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's move to what is happening uh, politically and in, in fact in form of uh, corruption fighting. Uh, for the last like two years, we have had issues of corruption. Every project that comes in uh, will hear of corruption. Actually, every project that came in the last five years and eight years, to be uh, precise, there have there has been cases of corruption. We have so many cases in court right now of every uh, level of uh, office being uh, questioned on uh, money appropriation. And just uh, this week, uh, last week, we saw what happened uh, with the Honorable Waluke, a case dating back to like say two years ago the fine that has been imposed on these particular persons. Do you think now the judiciary, Anita, has now become or has gained the faith of the public in terms of applying the rule of law? Uh, that's a very tricky question uh, uh, because uh, from where I look at it, uh, justice delayed is justice denied. I would acknowledge that um, Kenyans are happy, uh, some are shocked that actually uh, this this case has borne fruition, but it's a result of a strong ODPP, the, the Office of the Deputy, of the pr Prosecutor, and also EACC. Would we say we really uh, give much weight to the judiciary? I, I really don't think so, because um, if you look at... The, the type of problems the judiciary is having it's uh it's 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 crazy from delayed cases uh mm -hmm. cases backlog right now the judiciary was among the first uh first um, uh, government agencies to to go on um on a go slow after the covid 19 the the courts were closed down mm -hmm. which means even cases that should have been tried earlier have been postponed uh, you've heard of LSK uh, uh, CEO Nelson Harvey complaining about Zoom meetings. He's complaining about uh, it's like the judges don't know how to use uh, the microphones, the cameras. You don't. You are not even sure which judge you are you are talking to. Mm. You don't know even which which uh, file cases they are looking at or where you are, if you're on the same page. Like in terms of let me call it technological error. Mm -hmm. He's also talking about issues regarding like brick and mortar, whereby he wants more uh, more courts, more physical courts. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would not really. Uh, put the, the the good job or rather the persecution of corruption i would not squarely put it on the um, the, the judiciary will not give it the benefit of doubt rather i'd give it on the court of public opinion whereby people have uh, pushed for these things to happen i'd also put the I, i'd say good job to the to odpp and also good job to eacc as for the judiciary Ah, it's a win, but uh, compared to what Kenyans want to see, mm -hmm. uh, it's just a drop in the ocean. So I'd say they need to uh, they need serious key r institution reforms. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Kendi, uh, this maze scandal is one of the many scandals of maze that has happened to this country, and uh, seeing the amount of peop um, money these people have been charged by the court. Uh, of course, they will be appealing. Actually, there's a there's a story doing around that they will be appealing. Yeah. To so, uh, do you think do you, do you think at this point the judiciary how has the faith of the public now? We we if these people have been done this, maybe tomorrow will be better. Um, Hillary, 
let's first uh, let's first go back to this Wanuke case. It dates back to 2004. Mm -hmm. Maize that was supposed to feed Kenyans who are starving. This is a case that's being now persecuted in 2020, 16 months later. Again, let's also admit that the, the only reason that we're seeing a lot of work going on in corruption is because the government has actually admitted that there is corruption and the government is willing to deal with corruption. That is why we have a strong ODPP. That is why we have ESCC used to be a toothless dog. Mm -hmm. At least right now we can see ESCC doing something. The judiciary, not really. Mm -hmm. This is a case that, it's actually a case that started by these people being awarded money, uh, being awarded money by the courts. Mm -hmm. NCPB was made to pay Kinawaluke and Wakungu. Mm -hmm. So no, I still don't have faith in the, the judiciary. I think this is a case that had evidence beyond reasonable doubts. That's the only reason they were persecuted. If there was one loophole, mm -hmm. I don't think they would have been they would have been prosecuted. But over time, the, the judiciary always say there was not enough evidence. Then the question goes to the DPP and the DCI. You did not do enough, so it remains to be the agencies. Do you think our agencies are well equipped to provide enough evidence for a particular case? Yes, I think our, our agencies are well equipped to provide evidence. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the Akasha case that was needed in in America? Mm -hmm. They used evidence that had been gathered by that had been gathered by Ken Kenyan agencies, mm -hmm. but the guys could not be prosecuted in Kenya because of the corruption in the judiciary. They already owned so many judges. Mm -hmm. That is why it could not be pro prosecuted in Kenya. I, I think our agencies are doing a good job, but the gap between the prosecution and the judiciary is too big. Mm -hmm. The judiciary only prosecutes when it doesn't have any other choice. And I will not be surprised if they appealed in court and they were given leniency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, what do you make? Um, I also want to add that um, the other problem facing the judiciary is um, it, it, it is one of the institutions that do not d does not undergo any reforms, any changes. If you look at the le legislature, I mean, after every five years, uh, you have to renew your mandate. If you look at government, there is always a shifting face of government. Might be the same people, but in terms of government uh, ministries, agencies, and departments, there is a shift. ODPP, you remember when uh, new guys come. I mean, there's usually like, you know, you guys put them on page one. There's mm -hmm. usually a renewed form of hope. Same thing with ESCC. If a boss is changed, there's that big deal. But you look at the judiciary, it's, I mean, a judge is a judge. A lawyer is a lawyer. An advocate is an advocate for a number of years. That's why we have senior counsels. That's why we have renowned lawyers who handle, even uh, lawyers who are now specific, if it's criminal law, if it's a family case the same people. So what we have is usually a change maybe in the Judicial Service Commission and maybe the Chief Justice whose capacity is somehow uh, limited. And when you look at the case of Maraga who has now like I think four, mo four months to go, I mean what magic can he do that he failed to do uh, in the previous years? At least we can see for Motunga being from an activist background, that was the only thing that differentiated him. But now uh, expecting the judiciary to reform right now uh, is crazy, and that's why they keep on pushing, pushing the executive. That's the president to sign in, to to swear in the forty-one judges, mm -hmm. and it's not happening because the forty-one judges have issues. Like we are talking about a judiciary handling cases of corruption when the judiciary itself needs mm -hmm. to be sanitized. It's tinted, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's a uh, it's a joke. It's almost comical. Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, Christine, uh, you mentioned of, uh, of the judiciary not being okay, you don't trust it. Now, there has been law, there have been law, the constitution is there, there, there are acts. Do you think it is the application of the law that has the problem or, or it is the persons? Yeah, everything in law is defendable. Mm -hmm. So we only need to have the moral, the, it, the, the rulings have to be, to be accompanied with some morality. When someone steals food that was, actually someone gets, it takes a tender to, um, to bring in food that is meant for starving Kenyans. And then this person supplies air. <laughs> I mean, seriously, if that person appeals in court, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever loopholes are there, whatever gaps are there in the evidence, in the evidence provided, mm -hmm. we know that this, this base was not supplied. So it, yes, in some, some acts, every, but then the constitution defends, it, uh, defends everything. 
you can defend everything using the constitution, but also in the rulings, morality has to apply. Mm -hmm. That these are people who cause. There are people who died for not receiving that, that maize. And this is a country where maize has been eaten. But the, any corruption has to, uh, has to be accompanied with maize. Every year, every, every government, every, every time we have a maize candle that's coming up, mm -hmm. and that is because of the food shortages that we witness in this. In a kwangashua bet. Looking at maize, you lazimu tatoka kwa. Shua bet means, okay. Now, Anita, we have so many cases, the NYS, the Anglo leasing. Uh, we, we, we still have the treasury, uh, former treasury uh, the Kimware and uh, Arold Dam. These are things we will never know, even what happened to Kiambu. We're still waiting. Uh, and of course, even our own governor here in Nairobi, we're still waiting. Delayed justice. Why do we have to delay if we have agencies that are well equipped, they have evidences. Now, when it gets to the courts, why the delay? still come back to judicial reforms why the delay is because naturally um you must prove beyond reasonable doubt for for any case to go through whether criminal whether in terms of procedure or substance it must be beyond reasonable doubt but the other uh, other thing which Kendi has also alluded, alluded to is we're talking about even confidence in the judiciary mm -hmm. Why uh, justice will be denied and why things will continue as status quo is we don't, first of all, we don't uh, have confidence in the judiciary, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, sometimes the judiciary offers judgment or even uh, I'm looking at court orders. For example, currently as we speak, the judiciary, uh, or w one of the courts has suspended the Nairobi Metropolitan Services. You yourself, you KBCs in Nairobi, you've walked, you've looked at uh, what they are doing. Mm -hmm. I know you're seeing uh, transformations in Nairobi in terms of infrastructure. But today, as we speak, N NMS is doing whatever it's doing illegally because all its operations has been suspended as uh, as we wait the way forward apparently it was uh, illegal the creation was illegal so some court orders are just uh, I, I don't want to say null and void but they're just null and void so until we restore faith in the judiciary whereby one they can deliver timely cases whereby number two they can um, they can uh, g give cases following, give directive on cases following natural law, mm -hmm. then we would have at least a bit of confidence. But as it stands now, court orders, even you yourself, mm -hmm. you, you cannot, they don't, they are, don't even make head or tail. Actually, now that you have mentioned this <laughs> happening on, uh, um, I'm forgetting this street. Koinange. Not Koinange. I'm forgetting the name. This is a uh, in city market. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Mwindimbingu. Uh, Mwindimbingu. Yeah. Yeah. provide public part. I don't know what is going on. Uh, and I remember, I think it is 20, 2017. Uh, Governor Sonko was saying he will he will take every, every public space that was taken by maybe, say, these... Uh, investors to, to back to the public now is it the same thing that is happening because this road is now shrinking and we know every time there is uh, traffic in the cbd or it's just a way of having no parking in the cbd okay. thing mm. is why are they doing that i haven't seen it <laughs> because now this is a problem we have and I'm, I'm, i've said this because of the public information yes. uh you will see a post uh a building coming up this project is by, done by this, by this. But now, the public, do the public have enough information to question on anything that happens around them? And if a scandal comes, like the Kimorel, they will see a project will be done by this and this. Do the public always follow to see if the project that was said to be done by so-and-so, has it been done to accordingly and through the amount that was allocated by them? I would like to say that most Kenyans are living from hand to mouth. You are so blinded by trying to make ends meet and you're living uh, below a dollar a day. Mm -hmm. You're struggling with hiking fares, with sanitization. You don't know if, you know, until timing. There are people I know, they say, it's two. Two, the fare is, I don't know uh, what <laughs> amount. And that's like, there's a significant difference. Mm. So Kenyans, some Kenyans are living from hand to mouth. Until really that is your business complete. Maybe it is your house that is being t 
take it, until it's your business you have like you have it's not that you don't want to be interested but you're too busy making your ends meet to look at that mm-hmm. so i i believe that's now the space that the civil society takes because the civil society is the in between uh, between they are paid the ngos in civil society are paid to look at government if you look at even the issues of um, the referendum or constitutional changes bbi most of the people that make noise are not individual citizens mm-hmm. but rather the ngos the civil society is the one that will come with um, education uh, p- public education uh, give the public information you're talking about mm-hmm. so if uh, for example you look at the case of ngong i've seen uh, cs kiriako tobiko has said that uh, uh, the areas aro- around ngong road are grabbed forest and there are residentials even in langata that fall within this prism mm-hmm. he said that uh, he's going to reclaim all the uh, forest um, Mm-hmm. or the forest land and if you look at this it is informed by the work of ngos that have been uh, working through this sector mm-hmm. um even yesterday i saw a feature about uh, nairobi river whereby ngos have, have sponsored young people to go and clean and they're discovering things so mm-hmm. expecting a normal citizen to have public information unless this person is an elite or a person who reads or a person like you who is paid to know what is happening mm-hmm. Uh, it becomes very difficult for an ordinary citizen who is making day to day ends meet to actually have the public information unless maybe sponsored by ngos or mm-hmm. unless it falls within a, your particular sector for example if now you're in environment you would know uh, about uh, karura forest planting of forest and now what's happening ngong forest mm-hmm. No, okay, Kendi. Uh, Anita has mentioned of the ignorance of the public is due to the hassles and bustles of life. Is this true? You know, our our interest in corruption and allegations of corruption mm-hmm. is emotional. Mm-hmm. You have to tell me that I, the street in Muindim being what it cost me. That, uh, for example, when you talk about Ngong Forest, you have to tell me which services I have been denied by people who have built in the forest. Mm-hmm. Because you have first to rouse the emotions of Kenyans for them to see the, es- the essence of uh, fighting corruption. Mm-hmm. The same way they say, mm-hmm. unless now you, you have to actually put it down to them mm-hmm. that when someone steals 30 billion, what that 30 billion means to you. Mm-hmm. When someone stole, when someone stole around 318 million in 2004, you have to explain to them what that 318 billion translates to. That's mm-hmm. the only way Kenyans relate to corruption. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, ukiwambia when yamejenga hapa, this is stolen land. They mm-hmm. don't care. Unless you tell them this is stolen that land, that is why you guys don't have water in your taps. That mm-hmm. is when Kenyans will start relating to in that. In fact, Kendi, I'd like to support you because I'm looking at it. Even some of us seated here, I've never even seen one million in their yeah. lives. <laughs> and then, let's be honest, Hilary, mm-hmm. you've mm-hmm. never seen one million, and I'm talking I'm about billions <laughs> or t- trillions. You can't even so you are like, relate to that. You can't even relate to what exactly is a million. Eh? Mm-hmm. Even if I, I, I drop a hundred thousand here, I, I might confuse Hillary. And now we are talking about one million. Mm-hmm. And I've seen even NGOs using uh, hyperbole analogies. They say, if you ukitandika yo pesa kutoka hapa, imejenga Nairobi to Mombasa, highway maratatu. Mm-hmm. And then people are like, ama is only thicker road. We would mm-hmm. have another thicker road thika in roads. Western, 14 <laughs> thicker roads. And then people are like, oh, now I can get. Because... Mm-hmm. Kenya, I'm telling you the gap between the rich and the poor. Mm-hmm. The people have not even seen a, 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 even a hundred thousand is a lot of money. I, I remember when Kidero was uh, was being told he has stolen some money and uh, there's somewhere in Westlands. Uh, what they are saying, ata hiyezi bebo na bag. Yeah, yeah, no, you, no, you have to explain it to Kenyans like that. No, like, imagine there are Kenyans who've not even mm-hmm. carried, like, known you can put money in a bag. So you know, yao inatosha, inatosha kwa mkono peke ama kwa mfuko, and mm-hmm. that's the maximum. Mm-hmm. And, and then remember, like, even now that you mentioned Kidero, remember there was allegations he bribed a judge 200 million. Mm-hmm. That is before Two, he got into office. Yes. Yeah. 200 million so these amounts of money are uh, like dreams you know like chasing dreams mm. so for people you are like, eh? what do you mean all right so in regards to this information to the public do do you think the media can uh, can be is doing enough to inform the public or to to unearth what is happening around them 
No, I think the media is getting caught up in the politics. Mm -hmm. That they usually look for the political angle of a corruption case. Like this Walukule case. It's a it's a it's a 2014 it's a 2004 case. Mm -hmm. I don't see the relationship between that uh, that case and his political affiliations. But the media will find a way of intertwining it with its with his political affiliations. Mm -hmm. They'll actually get a list of people who are being who have been accused of corruption and tell and say that these ones are on this side. Then make you know the, the media does not give you they will not exactly tell you that one mm -hmm. they will insinu they will make you think they will they will lead you to that. Mm -hmm. Like give you stories of who and who and who. Give you a list of six people who have been accused of corruption, who have cases in court uh, on corruption. They now leave it to you to decide that. Mm -hmm. So I don't think the media is doing enough mm -hmm. to, 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 to tell Kenyans about corruption. And again, the media needs to relate it to the everyday lives of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. When we say that Walukule stole this amount of money, show us the pictures of people in 2004 who are starving, people who are dying of hunger. The, the, the starvation at that time was really bad. Mm -hmm. Show us of people who died in Trokana mm -hmm. because of this money. That now we can't we can start defending this person because he speaks the political language that I do. This person cost life. People died because of that, because of the money that he that because of maize that he did not supply. He supplied air. Mm. Yeah. Kendi, is the media uh, Anita, sorry. Mm -hmm. Is the media doing enough? For me, I disagree with Kendi. I believe the media is doing enough because for me, the role of the media is to tell it as it is. If you look at the Senate impeachment uh, motion against Waiguru, it was live. Whether politicians will come and manipulate and tell you otherwise, whether Waiguru will finish with a statement and say <laughs> that this is a target of BBI because she supports BBI, that's why uh, these cases are coming to her and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's up to your interpretation. The media will uh, do the story, do the cover, invite Hillary will invite me. Whether people choose to listen to whether Kendi will advise or misadvise them is now another story. So for me, uh, the role of also the public, as much as the media has its role, also the public and the individual has its own role. Because you have this information, it's up to you to see the information to your understanding. It's, it's up to you to read it between the lines. It's up to you to find out who owns KTN, who owns uh, K24, who owns KBC. And, uh, and notice that KBC will be stating state agenda. KTN will be uh, stating issues regarding the son of Moi. And TV would be advocating for private interest agenda. So it's up to you as um, a, a, re a recipient of uh, this information mm -hmm. to see it to your, like, to your liking. And Kenyans are getting more educated. So um, I, uh, with Kibaki came in free primary education, and now there is uh, all factors constant, of course, considering COVID. Mm -hmm. But there is more information. There is, you know, unlike the old times whereby we had only uh, KBC as the TV station. Now we have a variety, some we don't even know. Mm -hmm. So every time you switch on your TV, it's up to you to uh, to go to the most news worthy stories of your liking. So I believe for me the media is uh, doing what it should. Mm -hmm. It's up to the public to receive information. And also I believe there is a Communications Authority of Kenya which is charged with uh, checking media um, in uh, in terms of the platform, in, in terms of content, if it's films, we have Kenya films and classic. I mean, there's no shortage of who is monitoring what mm -hmm. media is doing. So as much as we have the bodies, also individuals need to monitor what they get. But for me, uh, in terms of presentation, giving us live feedback, even Lusiko, there was even social media, uh, print media, mm -hmm. and the live coverage from the different uh, 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 station. So it was up to you. In fact, even I even saw like people grilling uh, Malala after the whole uh, Waigoro impeachment thing, mm -hmm. and it was coming from well-informed Kenyans who are like, you could, you should not have chaired this committee like this. You should have done this. You should have done this. Mm -hmm. And even uh, uh, media is. Uh, I'm also looking at media from 
just a social media perspective social media perspective itself nowadays you can even get information from social media even before you go yeah, to you, you 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 go to mainstream media even politicians are now using social media if you uh, the likes of murko men mm-hmm. are using it to articulate their issues <laughs> and i'll see some of you picking up uh, what they said mm-hmm. on t- and say uh, mm-hmm. murko men had this to say or this particular leader has this to say so for me it's also a personal responsibility of the citizen apart from uh, saying it's the role of the media or- Thank you for keeping us company and if you just tuned in this is why in the morning my name is Dereva Hilary we are talking about politics what is going on around you I'm speaking to Anita Kirote governor's consultant and Christine Kendi political analyst uh, before we went for that break we were looking into the issues around the judiciary what makes the cases to delay uh, the corruption cases how the agencies are equipped are they strong enough how is the media uh, playing the role of the watchdog as it should be is it doing enough to ensure that you as the public you're informed of what is happening and are you being uh, frauded in any case and Anita was telling me the media is doing enough but um, Kendi, she spoke of the CISOs, uh, civil society, how they are, and they are the people who inform the public or they fight on behalf of the public. Now, do you think we are at a point where the CISOs should now, the activism should be increased? Should they be many to join the Tukuna group, Flani, in Afaitianga? Like we have this uh, particular person, he complains of anything that okay, comes out. Okay, Omtata. Yeah, o- Omtata, <laughs> anything that touches on the public, he'll be there. Should we have more Om um, Tatas? Mm, yes and no. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, because uh, too much uh, too much activism will make issues look like a joke. Mm-hmm. Like I want to pave this, I want to pave this road. You tell me that it, ha- it hasn't gone through public participation. Uh, that we were not, we didn't ask the stakeholders. We didn't. So no, too much, uh, too much activism mm-hmm. will will dilute the activism and yes we need a little more activism because i mean look at where this country has come from Mm -hmm. we are here we are enjoying the democratic space we enjoy because of the activism that was there in the past and right now because of people who fought people have fought for the democracy that we enjoy the freedom of speech that we enjoy Mm -hmm. so yes especially because now we can't rely on our political parties anymore people are vested in personal interests Mm -hmm. when it comes to political parties we don't have a very strong opposition Mm -hmm. so the opposition that (laughs) (laughs) non-existent let let me just say we don't have a very strong opposition so the opposite the only opposition that we have Mm -hmm. right now is the civil societies and you can't also don't play the importance of a strong opposition Mm -hmm. actually i am one of the people who think that a strong opposition is much better than a strong government because the opposition keeps the government in check that mm-hmm. anything the government does you know any th- any procedure that the government missed mm-hmm. you know and you also know that you don't want to give the government so much freedom mm-hmm. because the government the government can disrespect freedom mm-hmm. they care well, you don't want to overpower your government because we also have our rights and you don't want also want to to drive the government into di- dictatorship mm-hmm. we want someone who keeps the government in check mm. all right anita before you respond uh, do you think the country meets baba as the opposition <laughs> <laughs> um, baba as the opposition i i, I kind of think he's still playing the role of opposition mm-hmm. even within government mm-hmm. that um things Things are clearer uh, when he's in government. I, I think there's um, some integrity that goes with Papa mm-hmm. that he does. He doesn't want to be involved in so much, in so much that that kuna malivi to stand around. Then he's like, hey, no, we can't do this. You know, but they will say it's because now I'm in government. Mm-hmm. That is why the government is doing this. And again, you ho- also have to understand that the the corruption cases that we are hearing of right now, we. C- there's a possibility that we could never have heard of them. Mm-hmm. The only reason you're hearing of corruption cases is because they are coming, they are being exposed from within the government, either by the president or by the people within. The president is now free. Mm-hmm. He's not afraid of, ex- as in, for him exposing corruption is not a sign of weakness. Mm-hmm. It's a sign of fighting corruption. 
So he's willing to, if someone is corrupt, he sacrificed his treasury, yes, mm -hmm. for corruption. He was like, come and come and come. If he's corrupt, let him go. Mm -hmm. And that happened. So yes, Baba, I I think Baba is playing his his role in opposition. We haven't lost opposition yet. Okay. So Anita, should we have uh, more citizen activism? Uh, for me, I say, in fact, Mutuma Kangata should open his NGO board, uh, branch, every county, 47 counties, mm -hmm. every county. In fact, uh, I've come to notice that uh, this whole activism thing is very strong in western uh, counties, uh, Siaya, mm -hmm. uh, Kisumu, uh, Migori, and the likes. I don't know if it's because traditionally they were opposition uh, parties, but if you look at NGOs, serious NGOs and the heads, mm -hmm. most of them, uh, especially the small CEO, CEO, uh, um, civil societies, mm -hmm. most of them are in Western or Mombasa. And maybe because of a history of oppression, Mombasa, you know, of course, there's a lot of marginalization. Yeah. So if you look um, at um, NGO history, you'll find that it's stronger. I don't know why Kwakina Kendia Kunanga NGO. In fact, I've never <laughs> even had Mandamano. I don't know, maybe everything you people... Okay. Yes, every, I, I think everything is eh? okay. I've never <laughs> heard of an NGO in Meru. I've never had a, mm -hmm. an of NGO in Central. Uh, not, uh, I mean, okay, in Central, there is the Jiga type. I'm talking about a uh, governance activism, mm -hmm. serious governance activism. It's like these things only uh, exist in the um, in the Western regions. Mm -hmm. But anyway, for me, civil society is a very fundamental part of society, and it must uh, be strong. In fact, uh, if you if you remember 1992 in the fight for multi-party democracy, it mm -hmm. was the NGOs, it was the civil society, it was the churches, the likes of uh, Joya, Timothy Joya. Uh, Cardinal Otunga, who laid their lives in quotes, who, who fought for uh, multi-party democracy to have political parties. Mm -hmm. And now it's interesting now, uh, once we had the political parties, I thought the political parties would expand, we would have more political parties and maybe less NGOs. Mm -hmm. But today, uh, I, uh, 20 or 30 years later, it's like the tune has shifted. Now we need, for me, I'd say today, today we need a lot of more, more civil society because we, yes, we have political parties, but political parties that are run as businesses. If you look at political parties, they are like um, business <laughs> of exploiting and um, it, uh, quoting a few from Keraito, he had this bus, and you know, when you have a bus, you get 20, 20 bob, 20 Anyone. bob. <laughs> Upanda. Then you negotiate, oh, una 20 bob, kona 10 bob, 10 bob. Mm -hmm. So political parties, they've become like this bus, you know, which which uh, takes you to the destination that you want to go. Mm -hmm. It has become, um, uh, in fact, the, the other day I was joking, I was saying political parties need to be registered as a business. Be registered as a business, even pay taxes. Because uh, what's going on, I mean, it's, it's a joke. Parties that had strong standing, parties that look at what happened to NAC. NAC gave us a very strong presidential candidate 2002. And now NAC is almost on its deathbed with only a strong uh, leader. That's Martha Karua. But in terms of party structures, NAC is weak mm -hmm. it, it so political parties have managed to give us illusions it has given us a kuru au court but after a kuru au court what else do we have you will know a kuru au court i know him for this moses Swetangula, i know him for this the only party that has stood the um the test of time i'd say currently is uh kanu <laughs> coincidentally and it Ford. might come back <laughs> and also odm odm is actually one of the most structured parties and a, a very strong party for that matter. But now for these parties to survive, they need to have collisions. You cannot run, in, in Kenya, the history of Kenya, you cannot run in a political party without collisions. Now the biggest challenge comes in when you have collisions. For example, uh, the, um, the NASA coalition which had uh, ODM, ANC, WIPA, it had a tenor, and the tenor ended about two months ago. And now those parties are reinventing themselves and finding... Uh, new ways to survive mm -hmm. or rather to get out of ICU. <laughs> they're, they're now getting a, a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. But now the worst case scenario is the Jubilee collision, the Jubilee party rather, where parties were told to fold up, 
mm. come so you have one party but inside the party there are so many wrangles uh, it's even confusing you even don't know everybody's mm. in the party but they are walking in different directions yeah. which is why i say civil society must come because now political parties are it's like in quotes everybody's in government so if everybody's in government then who is the opposition mm -hmm. and remember as per IBC and as the election the official de facto opposition leader currently mm -hmm. remember we only had a uh, uhuru and a court mm -hmm. baba did not in the second in the second election the second never election appeared. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it remains so, the opposition. Exactly. That's what <laughs> is he doing his job? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, a yeah, Kuro court comes from civil society. I've seen, um, as of last week, the civil society formed uh, a coalition called Uwezo, Uwezo Consortium, whereby they are calling, um, they are talking about they don't want a referendum and they don't want. Um, anything to do with uh, the bbi process they are uh, claiming that the constitution has not been implemented and they are saying why have another political press process mm -hmm. to now change a constitution that you've not even implemented in the first place so those are some of the fundamental questions so for me i believe um if you look at kenya in the african map kenya stands very tall um i think after nigeria south africa in sub-saharan africa we 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 are about uh, number three we uh, we have uh, one of the best infrastructures in fact uh, people people like get shocked why kenyans are complaining about uh, the country but i believe also you need someone in check hillary if your wife did not ask you if you've come home mm -hmm. you would st and uh, if it's not covid or curfews you would be doing what you want but because unajoki fika nyumbani unapata makelele you you discipline yourself automatically so Currently, where Kenya is, if a budget, there are NGOs, ev I tell you, everywhere, in terms of finance, budget ikisomwa leo, eh, when uh, Ukuri Yatani finish reading the budget, already NGOs were telling us, Institute of Economic Affairs, the likes of Kwame Owino, they were telling us, 10% uh, has been put in health, 20% has been put in manufacturing, this does not make sense, mm -hmm. more money should be, you know, always putting the government in its toes. All, the government is always in its toes. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, civil society is a very big factor and it needs to, to grow, to expand. I am for it expanding, especially because the position of um, uh, political parties is now watered down completely. We mm -hmm. had parties that stood for something. I mean, NAC stood for change. It stood for reforms. It stood for economic recovery. It stood for something. Mm -hmm. But the current parties uh, right now that we have, we, do, we don't know what WIPA stands for. We don't know what ANC, when, uh, um, when a party stands, we need to know. A ODM, it's known for referendum. Mm -hmm. Remember, it, it, it first came in 205, yeah. when there was no or yes, there was oranges and bananas. Mm -hmm. That's when ODM came up and we say, oh, ODM, Ford Kenya, we remember very well, Ford Kenya came as a result of um, when Raila broke, broke away from okay. Kanu. Mm -hmm. So we had parties that you would say, what can I associate this party with? But the current crop, uh, I saw TSP something, I can't read. No. Uh, from yeah, yeah. T-Service Party? <laughs> the Service Party. Oh, the sorry, sorry, party. sorry. Service Kunjuri. party. Yes, the service party. <laughs> what Which service? Eh? So, yeah, yeah. Okay, service whatever service. the party. <laughs> what does that party exactly stand for? Did they give you a vision, a mission that you can remember? Mm -hmm. In fact, when you see, you remember, but this guy was the CS. We had issues of locust. But then what happened party. to the he locust? Had the mm -hmm. He had the GNU. Mm -hmm. So what is this party being formed left, right and center? Like we need, we need, and especially the problem is what is the ideology? What does this party stand for? When you're having a collision, it's not because you come from Meru, another person comes from Western, and then now we want to have a collision. Mm -hmm. No, it should be, you stand for, you know, ideologies. And I, you're speaking of parties, and I know many, many youths right now are forming up parties because 2022 is coming. Yes. And this was the question I was asking. Should we, should we better the parties that are already existing or should we have new parties, especially now that I know a group of young people, a number of them, they are forming parties mm -hmm. because they feel oppressed? Uh, in my opinion, uh, the old parties, and I've always liked to give an example of South Africa and Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. If you look at South Africa, the major political party that has been in the scene is ANC. And if you look at ANC, the bureaucracy 
for Ma, for Malema to to get where he got at ANC it was trouble mm -hmm. as we are speaking today Malema is about 42 years old if he was e ANC would still be the youth leader mm -hmm. at 42 years old and the aspirations of a political party is for you to get into leadership but then our structures in the old i'd call the old political parties amacha maziko na wenyewe it's such that there are always blocks blocks kuna wenye chama what are you saying how will you cross how will you cross this other bridge which which led anc which led uh, malema to break for from anc and form his own party elf mm -hmm. was is it elf mm. Yes, he, he formed his own party and his party has gained a lot of traction, attracting very many young people. So the problem with big parties, uh, I'm talking about ODM, Jubilee, you enter, you enter as who? Mm -hmm. It has its own owners, it has its own kujuana um, and nepotism. The chances of a young person rising out of merit, mm -hmm. it, it will take a lot of years and the young people you're talking about most of them are v heavily borrowing from malema they're seeing that malema has done it he's gotten to this point malema kevin can even say now i want to vie for presidency and things of that nature okay. then we go to zimbabwe we have uh, zanu pf zanu has been like the oldest party the party that fought for um, democracy and the likes of chamisa um, mm. the, the opposition leader f uh, um, against mnagangwa he said Look, look at even ZANU PF. Even when Mugabe left, they didn't bring a, a person, a new person with a fresh ideas. They brought Mnagangwa, his interior security minister. Someone who knows the system. Someone who knows <laughs> the system. And, uh, and people are alluding to it. Zimbabwe has not changed. It is business as usual. Mm -hmm. Why? Because even if there is a change, it is still the same person. Come to Kenya now. Even Kanu itself is being run by the son of the for, uh, former president mm -hmm. Daniel Moy. So that that whole um, change that even if you go to these parties, mm -hmm. the guy who is running the show for you to break the bureaucracy, then the young people are uh, um, they are calling for change. They are call so if you want change, that's why they are forming their own political parties. Mm -hmm. But the question is, who is the sponsor of that political party? Kendi. Yeah. Should we have uh, young people having their own political parties, especially at a time like this, we're looking to 2022, where they'll be forming parties for them to have the position of leadership? You see, that's, uh, that's where the problem begins, where we form parties just, uh, parties whose vision is two years from now. They don't have a vision beyond 2022. Their vision is how to get into, into power, mm -hmm. and from there... Um, probably join uh, join a bigger party. Mm -hmm. Again, the other mistake that the youth make is fighting different wars, fighting wars from different fronts. Mm -hmm. They sh they should actually borrow from parties like Jubilee and ODM, like all these all these parties that have been formed by young leaders. Let them all form a coalition and fight a united front. When you form your party, I form a party, and it forms a party, and then you are fighting this one big party. Mm -hmm. We we are actually empowering this party because the party will come to you and tell you, swing your pachamaya to then you give your position. And according to you, it's better having a position mm -hmm. as number 10 or 15 in that bigger party then than you fronting your own party. Mm -hmm. So forming more parties actually weakens the youth more than it's, it strengthens them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, as we come to a close, uh, we had uh, last week the media was uh, treated everyone uh, with the glare of everything that was going on in the Senate. And actually for the last two weeks, there has been the cleansing of Jubilee House. And now, uh, actually, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a story in one of the dailies about the uh, Jubilee Party awarding uh, the wiper and uh, ODM for the uh, loyalists coming to the Jubilee Party. And this is something that uh, people, uh, they were expecting it to happen. But the cleansing, the cleansing of the Jubilee Party, Anita, mm -hmm. what, oh, was it okay? What, did they have any mistakes to be treated the way they were treated? Um, I think for me it's perfectly in order for the president to get his house in order. When you go to your house and you find that this uh, the the this table is not functioning the way you wanted it to or the purpose of the table was to hold uh, tea water and you find that the table has cracks you have no business but to remove the table get a new one or even stay without a table mm -hmm. so for me i think um 
it was timely. If you want to pass legislation, you don't want again to deal with uh, rogue fellas or fellas who, whose loyalty is a bit skewed. They need to be in a straight line. Mm -hmm. uh, a general must have all his positions in, in check. And for me, I think it was perfectly in order for the president uh, uh, to clean his house. And um, in, the, in the words of Ronald Reagan, mm -hmm. uh, politicians must be changed, whether they're in positions of power or positions that require a constant change for the same reasons that children's diaper must be changed. Mm -hmm. So for me, I believe that uh, it's appropriate for the changes to be made. It's appropriate that we have uh, new blood. We cannot have the same people for a long time. It doesn't matter how much good you present. Mm -hmm. And... If the president has an agenda, which he has among them, BBI and the Big Four agenda, and he's likely to bring legislation, especially executing the executive orders that he's been issuing, mm -hmm. issuing and they need um, legislation approval through acts of parliament, and the guys charged to do the same are uh, wishy-washy, mm -hmm. uh, cannot be trusted. I mean... If there is mistrust, these people must go. If their loyalty is um, unwavering, mm -hmm. they must go. Okay. Uh, Candy, mm -hmm. did the Jubilee child need to be changed the diaper? One, I think the president might be the only person who is actually interested about this country. You know, he's in his second and final term, mm -hmm. while everyone else in parliament is thinking about, not just parliament, and everyone who wants to come into parliament is thinking about 2022. Mm -hmm. So when you have a parliament, both houses, where, everyone, when, where people who are heading committees and committees are thinking about how they're going to advance their 2022 agendas, mm -hmm. you have a legacy here that you want to leave. And these people are not going to help you uh, win your legacy. For the president, I don't think the I don't think the changes for the president were very political. Mm -hmm. For him, it was about advancing his legacy, mm -hmm. about service delivery, mm -hmm. about you see motions were just being uh, motions were just being prevented mm -hmm. because the president haja haja ongea na hawa watu haja fanya nini so they were delaying they were delaying service delivery for the people they were delaying everything and the president is the head of the jubilee party the jubilee party is a ruling party so when you have people mm -hmm. in the ruling party who have decided to be opposition you give it, you give them space mm -hmm. to go and become opposition get your new people who will because the, pres the president does not sit in parliament. Mm -hmm. The only way he'll have his motions passed in parliament is by having his team that has his vision sit in crucial committee, in critical committees. Mm -hmm. So I think it was timely. He's the leader of the party. He needed to sweep that house, get the noise out of that house. We have more commotion when the ruling party is pulling from different directions mm -hmm. than when the opposition is pulling from different directions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the ruling party has the numbers. Mm -hmm. So yes, he needed to do it. All right. Uh, as we wind up, with Waiguro having, having been cleared by the Senate, do we have concerted effort to fight corruption by all the agencies and even from the houses? Yes. Um, I believe <laughs> yes. Yes, we do. And uh, the issue of Waigoro and especially counties, Inter specifically fighting, uh, corru they said corruption mm -hmm. between governors and MCAs. Mm -hmm. Hey, I think we need to do something because no sooner had Waigoro been mentioned, now I've seen even Charity Ngilu. Mm. Now I've seen today in the morning I had a Isiolo governor also. The MCAs, was, yeah. yes, the MCAs are now saying. So this whole business now it's becoming, to be really honest, it's becoming malicious. The MCAs are out here looking very funny. <laughs> because at every, so you want to say at every twist and turn, if the governor wants this budget and you, you feel it's inappropriate, at every twist and turn, the MCAs are fighting their governors. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's a joke. And also considering that it's the people who elected, it's Wanjiko who elected these governors, then you want MCAs as the representative and according to article one of the constitution whereby the sovereignty of the people mm -hmm. is instituted either through a uh, representation which is by elected leaders mm -hmm. or by one person one vote but now the mcs are are, are becoming like hecklers mm -hmm. because one the procedures are different mm -hmm. the reasons are different i mean our senate needs to institute 
uh, a legislation as soon as yesterday whereby they give the appropriate procedures from point A to point Z. How exactly do you impeach a governor? Mm -hmm. And why? Because, uh, this because we don't want also governors to be at the mercy of MCAs. Mm -hmm. If the MCAs say we want a budget of 500 billion or 500 million, the governor goes ahead and gives it because the governor is always afraid I'm going to be impeached, I'm going to be impeached. I mean the, MC, the, the governors cannot be held hostage by MCAs. Mm -hmm. It cannot work. So there needs to be some sort of law to, to regulate uh, this relationship because, I mean, it's now becoming a joke. No one is taking it serious. In fact, when uh, um, Waigoro went to Senate, mm -hmm. some are even questioning the procedure of uh, Waitito. So, some people are asking, by the way, how Did come they go to court? Uh, how come the Waitito case went so fast? Mm -hmm. Of course, we know their political motives, but now I think the same way it's very difficult to impeach a sitting president is the same way it should be difficult to to impeach. to remove a governor mm -hmm. and also let Wanjiko get what they deserve. If you elected someone and now you have a change uh, at two years, we are saying no, complete the term. Sote mm -hmm. pamoja. <laughs> to Vumiliane. You said yes, the, we have concerted effort. How so? First of all, I think Waigoro's impeachment was very ingenuine. Mm -hmm. That when I expected the MCA's impeaching her to mention issues affecting Mwananchi, expected them to mention how Waigoro mm -hmm. has not implemented the ADP, has not implemented the CIDP, but they go and mention that Waigoro has not held the annual, <laughs> what was it, uh, the governor's. Uh, uh, state, yes, uh, <laughs> uh, the address. address. Then they go ahead and say that she stole 10 million shillings. Uh. Mm -hmm. Not stole, she traveled. She traveled but did not travel and mm -hmm. it cost them 10 million shillings. When you have governors like the Samburu governor mm -hmm. who stole money with his deputy, you see uh, his co co county secretary mm -hmm. and six other CECs, but has not been impeached. Mm -hmm. So when you find someone like Waiguru, yes, Waiguru is not easy to work with, but that does not worry me. Actually, what worries me is the, is the governors that have not been threatened with impeachment mm -hmm. because it means this govern the, the MCAs are very comfortable. Mm, because the MCAs are yes, and, and, and why are they so the comfortable? So yes. these other governors who are being impeached by the MCAs mm -hmm. are actually might be the governors that are working because the MCAs are not eating, mm -hmm. and now because they're not eating, they want to replace the governor with a deputy governor who will who will feel like he owes them mm -hmm. for giving him this position. Mm -hmm. Now he will allow them to eat again. It also gives a, 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 it expose, the impeachments expose governors. Mm -hmm. Because the deputy governors are thinking, for example, Waiguru does not look like she'll come back. Mm -hmm. So the deputy governor might, might want to serve his two years before they live together. So mm -hmm. he might go and talk to MCAs and tell them, Sasa, mm -hmm. see we impeach this person. Mm -hmm. And then it also puts the, gov the governor the mercy of MCAs. Mm -hmm. That every motion, that the, every budget that the governor has to pass, mm -hmm. the MCAs have, have to be, their pockets have to be filled properly. Mm -hmm. then now we can pass this motion. So no one is interested about what Wanjiko mm -hmm. is getting. Mm -hmm. In Kerenyaga, I think no one is talking about the Kerenyaga people. And the Kerenyaga people need to be very careful mm -hmm. and start demanding for service delivery from the MCAs. I, in fact, can you, you remind me, for example, uh, the impeachment of uh, Waitito. Mm -hmm. And then the deputy governor becomes the governor, Nyoro. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, you guys came and the you same together. You, you mm -hmm. are the same people. The you same are people, in this yeah. together. And so then if the governor so how, is how is it a remedy? Yes, because mm -hmm. the question is, how is it a remedy? Okay, the governor has been impeached. The deputy governor becomes governor. But these people campaigned on the same platform, yeah. same vision, same mission, same political same party, CECs. same budget, mm -hmm. same CCs, same CEOs. And then you come and say, oh, now we the removed Waigoro. <laughs> now, the de yet these people, if you ask me, it's two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. So it's really a, 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 fut a matter in futility. All right. Kendi. Mm -hmm. uh, Actually, uh, there's someone following called Keep Me Teach, uh, Cyril Hope. Uh, he says he's following the conversation and he likes it. Uh, the Okay, this should be the opinion of uh, Christine and Candy. Uh, and Anita, you should be giving your number. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, those are the people watching us from home. I, I don't know whether we have other comments. But anyway, your, your final comments, Candy. Mm, my final comment is... These impeachment things need, these impeachment, uh, impeachments are becoming a joke. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. We need to give, I actually need to give the governors the five years. Mm -hmm. If you are not happy with their service delivery, we shall send them home in 2022. Mm -hmm. But let us not expose the governors at the mercy of the MCAs. Mm -hmm. That now the impeachments need to stop. We, we shall be in a five-year campaign period. Mm -hmm. We are the deputy governor is campaigning to, to replace the governor. Then from there, the MCAs are threatening the deputy governor because they're not happy with the deputy governor. So we, we actually need now to find, to find other dispute resolutions in the county assemblies mm -hmm. that do not involve impeachments. Okay. Yeah. Anita? Uh, for me, my final words, it's to Senator Cleopas Malala, the first thing you should do today morning, I don't know if they have a Senate committee, is to introduce a bill like yesterday or an act of parliament that um, shows the procedure of impeaching a governor. Because it's very sad for you to have a, a special Senate business committee and then you're being crucified mm -hmm. for the decisions of your committee members as the chair, which means there needs to be a procedure so that when we attack uh, Malala, we are not attacking Malala as Malala. We mm -hmm. are attacking Malala for following the procedure. But as it is now, he even risks losing his seat um, in Kakamega because ANC was like, we do not, uh, we are not party to this. This guy is representing the party in a wrong way. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, ad advice uh, Senate as soon as yesterday to at least in 2020 to have one of uh, a, a bill, a final bill that shows us exactly how uh, we are going to do it impeaching these governors mm. all right thank you i was hoping you give uh keeping a teacher your number <laughs> 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 otherwise for you keeping a teacher and every other person who has been watching us from home thank you so much for keeping us company they have been my guest anita and kirote uh political analyst and uh, christine candy political analyst as well I'll be seeing you again later in the evening. My name is Dereva Hillary. Have yourself a very good day. Good morning.